Hey everyone, we are back we are. and excited on this Mando Monday to be talking Mando all things, Monday. all things Mandalorian. Yes. So. Hello. Yep. As you see, we have Denzel back with us because it's hard to talk Star Wars without our good buddy Denzel, who knows so much more of the yeah. lore than Gary and I combined. Yes. And uh, we uh, we we wouldn't go far without Denzel when we talk Star Wars stuff. We need him here yep. to fact check. And to bring up things that at least myself didn't even think about or know about. Because yes. I know the movies and that is it in this show. Yes. Yeah. So. We know the movies. We know a couple shows. We know of the, the infamous Christmas special. And, uh, oh yeah. But, uh, but Denzel, he knows books and other random shows that I will be picking up. Yeah. He tries to. Tries. So. Um, but before we get started, before we do anything at all, we need to say this right here. Spoilers oh, yeah. are coming. Spoiler Listen, the, alert. Yes. For the entire season, there's no way we can properly discuss season two of Mandalorian without discussing what happened in it. So if you haven't seen it, push pause, go watch season two or whatever episodes you haven't watched, and then come back and continue to day. talk about it. What's that? Yeah, I mean, it's an, it's only take a day. <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. all. Like, why are you wasting time watching this yeah. if you haven't seen? It? Go watch the season yeah. two. Yeah, you know You've what we're doing. Yes. If you did pause us and go watch it, welcome back. Glad to have you back. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Hope you liked it. <laughs> yeah. So. If you didn't like it, then why are you here for this episode? That's all I got to say. No. But, um, but yeah. So here we are. Plenty of spoilers. This is your last, last chance. Spoilers are coming. Don't say we didn't warn you. And Spoiler uh, alert. Yep. And gentlemen, I think we need to start discussing this. So on this great Mando Monday, let's have, first of all, our initial thoughts. As always, we'll allow our guest, Denzel, to go first. What are your initial <laughs> thoughts on the season as a whole? Initial thoughts of the season. So, all right. So in comparing to season one, I am – much more happy with this season than season one. Season two is so much better than season one. Uh, mm -hmm. Season one, I mean, this what every every episode was like its own story and a story, or its own story and an episode. But this one, like except for episode two, basically the entire series or the entire season is like the completion or the the telling of a single story mm -hmm. in terms of getting like Baby Grogu as we now know. Him. Grogu to like a Jedi in terms of him being captured and then like uh, them saving him, like Mando learning and making new friends, meeting like all these incredible like other characters that like come out of the woods that have been making appearances and things like the Clone Wars, uh, Boba Fett, Ahsoka Tano, Boba, uh, Boba Katan, like all these characters that we've known from past like Clone Wars and rebels animation things and series you know season two did really well to introduce those new characters bring them into the storyline to tell like an entire like full-length story instead of just tell an episodic story or mm -hmm. tell multiple stories within one season this was one story for the whole season and for that like i really enjoyed season two i think it was a lot better than season one mm -hmm. all right excellent excellent gary how about you my man well, Denzel, uh, I wish I could argue with you because it would make for a better video because um, our arguments are legendary. Uh, however, I could not agree with you more. Um, this season was top notch. When I saw the trailer, of course, I was excited because I loved season one. Um, we talked about that a few months ago, how much I loved it. But uh, yeah, this season did exactly what it was supposed to do. Very little filler, very little, like you said, standalone stuff like the first one. The first season was establishing reintroducing some of the stuff, introducing some of the new characters this season. It, it didn't take a step back. It just complete, went completely forward. And every single episode mm -hmm. was there for a specific reason. Episode two may be a little bit of a filler. Um, we'll talk about mm -hmm. that later. But I feel like every single episode was it did what it was supposed to do. And I love this season. And I didn't think I could love something more than I did this season, more than season one, because mm -hmm. season one was great. But this one was just even better, yeah. in my opinion. So, mm -hmm. like I said, but sorry, I wish I could argue with you because I like arguing with you. I'm glad. <laughs> Thanks. <Yeah. laughs> so, 
um, I guess I guess for me on some of my thoughts, it's like, I mean, don't get me wrong, I really really enjoyed and loved, um, you know, the the second season. I love, I definitely love the like what you guys are saying, like the story aspect and all that kind of stuff of how it was one continuous story. Um, but I guess where I liked the first season a little better is I guess I preferred the episodic, like different stories mm -hmm. being told. Um, because I, I did like the, like, here's a story that we're telling and then, okay, this happened. We're ending. Now we're moving on. So it felt like more of that TV show where season two felt like they just made a movie, a really long mm -hmm. movie and then chopped it up. And so, yeah. and so that's why for me, it was kind of like, I guess the other one just felt a little bit more like I had at the end of end, end of each week. I'm like, okay, I have like a satisfactory conclusion that's still going to lead to the next part of the story. And so, mm -hmm. but I think like they kind of had to do that, like what you're saying, Gary, because they had so many new characters to introduce and to be able to really flesh out those characters, they had to be used properly in the different episodes for specific purposes. Where in this one, it felt more like, okay, everyone's there. Everyone exists. Now we're just going to take Mando and have him hop here, 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 and here. And then here's yeah. some new people. And then, you know, we just got to get more people in because here's what's going to happen at the end. And right. so it's like, like, so to me, and I think this is what, like you said about filler episodes. I feel like episode two, or I guess, you know, episode two of season two, I forget the actual, like, Dagnabbit, people are blowing me up on text messaging and this is annoying. I'm sorry. Um, frog episode. Yes. But uh, yeah, the frog, I see episode, like that one was a filler. And there was another one. That was that was pretty filler to me. That was just like, what in the world? Like, why are we doing this? But I can't remember which episode number it was. But um, it was it was the one like right before they they um, they stormed like not the prison, but they go to break the guy out um, to have yeah. him. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So is like, that the one with uh, is that the one with uh, Apollo Creed? Is he in that? Carl uh, Weathers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that one, I kind of. That episode. Oh, did he? Yeah. So, but the thing is, I just feel like yeah. So that one to me felt a little mm -hmm. bit filler esque, a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But mainly more so, I think it's just the nature of the way they did it, where they, it felt like a big movie and they had to chop it up. I feel like you're more prone to have episodes that feel that way, because yeah. it, it's it's just a part of the movie, if you will, that has to happen to progress the story. But when you chop it up like that, it felt a little filler. Where the other ones, I didn't feel a single in the season one. I didn't feel like a single episode was filler. Like I felt everything had its purpose and had its place. So that's where I guess I disagree a little bit with you too. But hey, it's yeah. just kind of where I was at. I still loved it because yeah. of the overall story. But mm -hmm. that's kind of where I felt with it. Yeah. So I thought yeah. it did. I thought this season did a very good job of because I feel like a TV show. Mm -hmm. um, should look to progress each season, like take, like take a step forward. And I feel like this season was, it was doing that, you know, right. because, you know, I'm a, kind of a TV junkie. You know, I've, I've watched a lot of shows where they kind of do the same thing each season. This one, right. I, I feel like this season was just a step forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. I, I do like, I, Oh yeah. Yeah. I do like the different directors, you know, mm -hmm. that is, I, I like seeing different styles and stuff like that. That is one thing mm -hmm. that they've done really well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do. I did like that a lot. I mean, just because like with one with the different directors, like you said, uh, Denzel said this before we started, you know, going recording here is it felt a lot like what Marvel was trying to do with like shows and movies and stuff and try to tie some things together. So having the different directors on the one vision uh, was really cool. But you still get different flavors in each episode. Mm -hmm. Right. So I thought that was, you know, that was really well done. And to still have the story, as you say, Gary, move forward and that they did different stuff. That was also really good. Yeah. yeah I think I think they did really well to do different storylines. Um, mm -hmm. But most of the time, or like especially what we've seen with like the movies, you know, episodes seven, eight, nine, they're all kind of like the same storylines of four, five, and six. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of like the same thing, just mirrored or a little bit different. But mm -hmm. there's not much in the Mandalorian, especially in season two, that is really like it's all new. It's all like yeah. distinct. It's all its own story, like mm -hmm. in terms of like saving baby baby Yoda or him being captured or like him finding his, his powers or them introducing saving different different people throughout the series. 
Like mm-hmm. it's all different stories, I think, or different. It's a different story than what we've been used to seeing. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 Which is needed in the Star Wars universe, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. That it's like, let's have, you know, you have this huge galaxies, galaxy, galaxies and planets of storytelling galaxies. you can do. Yeah. Galaxies that you can mm-hmm. use, like freaking use them, like tell us a different yeah. story. And I think that's, that to me is still the Mandalorian's strongest like quality is that they're oh, telling no stories that we're just not used to hearing. Like these are new <clears> stories <throat> that we're, that we haven't right. got, even though they're pulling from stuff that we already have, like Denzel has pointed out from other TV shows or, you know, the movies and stuff, even though they're pulling in characters, they're not making it about those characters, which I really appreciate. Right. Denzel, remind me again, you, you've seen the Clone Wars, correct? Yes. Okay. Let's make sure. Yeah. yeah. I mentioned it in the past 10 minutes. So I was going to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Because I'm sorry to mention it. To, to <laughs> Just kidding. So what I love, and and speaking on what you're talking about, Efren, this show, and I'm, I'm hoping this is what the other shows they're announcing doing, what do the everyday people in the Star Wars universe, what are they doing during this time? You know, mm-hmm. and, and that's what this show, I think, has done really well. You know, we've seen the big stories going on, but people underneath, like, what are they doing? You know, and mm-hmm. it's just like, it's been interesting. Yeah. Which, by the way, that's what um, that's what the uh, Agents of Shield try to do with the Marvel movies, mm-hmm. and it didn't go so well. I mean, later on, people said it no. got better, or whatever, but it just didn't. At least for me, it was just kind of like, okay, but you're never bringing in any big characters like ever, right. and ma- so yeah. it just kind of was just like, now I don't care about the little guy. Where yeah. Mandalorian, like you said, makes me care about all these little guys and what's mm-hmm. going on. Yeah. Yep. I think I think especially with um with the Mandalorian, like the new characters that are introduced in some of the new stories, and like a lot of the a lot of times, like especially in past or Star Wars movies and Star Wars series, the story is always like or the objective of each story is to like, oh, we gotta destroy this ship or we gotta go mm-hmm. uh okay. secure this piece of intel, or we gotta go get this uh like uh this map or something though, or the schematic. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's Rogue One, that's uh, episodes four, five, and six. The, the episode seven, mm-hmm. in the movies, but in the Mandalorian is like this focuses on like the smaller scale things and focuses on like oh well, he the Mandalorian needs this or he needs to find his people, so he's going to go find his people, or he needs mm-hmm. to go find the Jedi, so he goes goes and tries to find a Jedi and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. And I like the I like the variations of the variation, like having a different story. Than what we're used to mm-hmm. yeah well even the fact that like we're seeing the ramifications mm-hmm. of the empire on these mm-hmm. smaller areas these smaller people these you know the everyday people like you're saying and like even something as you know we saw alderaan you know get mm-hmm. destroyed you know in a new hope and then you have the what is it i can't remember the girl's name she's the cage fighter but uh she's from there and she's still dealing with the she's talking about you know ramifications she's still struggling mm-hmm. with her planet being destroyed, right. you know? And it's, so it's, it's cool that these things that happen in the original movies aren't just like footnotes. They're like, there's still right. ramifications to these things. And right. they've done a great job with that type of stuff. Yeah, right. And it even brings personality to like characters from the empire. Like I think it was mm-hmm. the pilot in the last episode, he says, I was there when like the dust yeah. stars were destroyed. I was there yeah. when I fell around blown up. Yeah things like that and like brings personality to like the stormtroopers and the, the empire and it's like they're not just like mindless people no. they, yeah they are themselves like they believe what they believe and they're doing what they do because of what they believe mm-hmm. yeah i mean even like the very first episode how how that little town that he showed mm-hmm. up in and just how you know the sheriff Found found Boba Fett's armor and everything that went down because the Empire was gone, and then it became mm-hmm. a big turf war for that area, and just how yeah. that that town had to deal with it. I mean, all that kind of stuff is the cool things that that we've always wanted to see from bigger franchises. Mm-hmm. Anyways, it's like, what are the ramifications? You know, like like other other like Marvel, you know, tried to do this with like Civil War and stuff, but they never really dug into it. Like I said, even when they they didn't dig into it, and I feel like Mandalorian's right. doing it right. They're digging into what is actually happening to people because of everything else that happened on a bigger scale. Mm-hmm. For sure. So, yeah. So it's been, so it's been really good. So to keep moving on as we are 
kind of already on topic. What what of what are some of their favorite moments? And um, I guess, Sir Gary, we'll go ahead and start with you, man. Oh. Like, what are some okay. of your favorite moments? Well, let's see. I thought episode one was incredible. The uh, Star Wars uh, Tremors Western episode, as I've called it. Mm -hmm. um, favorite moment, seeing Boba Fett's armor show up on Timothy Oliphant. That was pretty cool. Not only seeing that armor again, but, you know, a really cool established actor being in that scene. It was really great. Um, love that episode. The ending where we see Boba Fett. It's like, oh, man, what are we in store for? Um, you know, these last three episodes I thought were absolutely incredible. Um, you know, seeing uh, these characters from other shows that Denzel has told us about, seeing them, Bo-Katan, uh, the, the, the lady whose name I don't remember, but Sasha Banks played her, um, the wrestler. Um, and uh, what's the lady, the Jedi from the woods, ah ah Ahsoka? Ahsoka. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I've always heard about her, but seeing her show up, it was just really cool. I'm, I'm sorry, Denzel. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, it's just, those are some of my favorite moments. And then Grogu learning who Grogu was. He's mm -hmm. no longer baby Yoda. He has a name and he looks at him and goes, Grogu. Eh? Yeah. That was awesome. I love that. Yeah. Eh? You know? Um, <laughs> so those are my favorite moments, you know, and just the way it was shot just is really good. I mean, yeah. So mm -hmm. just, in a nutshell, because I don't want to talk about my all-time favorite moment from this show yet, because I think we're going to get there. But mm -hmm. so, so yeah, yeah. All right, cool, cool. Denzel, my man, what you got? Yeah, I mean, I would, I would just take it back off of what Gary said. Like some of the, like some of the more epic moments in it were, like when Boba Fett finally made his entrance. I would say, like, I really enjoy like all the entrances that some of these characters made. Like they made like impactful, big entrances. They, I mean, when Boba Fett came on. In the, I think the third to last episode or the fourth to last episode or something yeah. like that, when he and he flew flew a ship in and like he landed there, got his armor, put it on, like he made like an outstanding like entrance, and, like down all the stormtroopers with his with a stick or whatever that thing is mm -hmm. called. Now that was freaking awesome. And then like yeah. his like I really enjoyed even in that episode how they like they went back to like Star Wars episode two. Clone Wars with his like seismic bomb that dropped from his ship. Yes. Like when that dropped and that made the same sound that it made like in episode two, I was like, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, that was, uh. like that was the Star Wars history buff in me just being so excited when that when things like that took place. Mm -hmm. And again, like back to entrances, Ahsoka Tano's entrance, Bo Katan's entrance, like all of them were like just, they were epic entrances. They weren't just mm -hmm. like Oh, I walked in on and I found this person. I just happened to find them. Like they actually made some sort of like impactful like entrance into the series. And I, I really enjoyed some of those things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and I guess <clears throat> I guess we all have kind of similar uh, takes on it because with Gary, I just love the whole first episode for what it was. Yeah. <laughs> and I just thought the whole thing was awesome. Um, but I will say, like, once you get to like the episode with Ahsoka, like I really loved that one. I just loved how um, like I was telling my wife, I was like, oh, she just looks so cool. She looks so cool, you know, like, because it was just finally seeing her and having the two blades and just her mm -hmm. just being awesome. And I'm just like, this is, this is great. And this is what I imagined Ahsoka to like look like. Granted, I haven't watched Clone Wars. So yeah, there it is. I had, to, I had to bring it up again. But it's just like from the certain, like from the certain episodes and certain different cartoons I've seen with Ahsoka in it, I'm just like, dude, like she should be you know, stinking awesome. And just yeah. seeing and just seeing her doing that in, in this way and the way they brought her in and she already has her own, you know, she has her own mission that's going mm -hmm. on. And so mm -hmm. I even liked how they used her that they just um, like it wasn't like, OK, we're throwing her in here for fan service, even though it was fan service, but it was done right. And yes. that's what mm -hmm. I appreciate, because it wasn't fan service for sake of fan service. It was fan service, but with a with a purpose. And she mm -hmm. has her own mission. She has her own thing going on. And then as we heard announced, which we'll get later, like her own show later. And it was like, okay, they did this right. And then of course her explaining Grogu's background and his name eh? and then how, yeah. Huh? And then how her and Mando could connect better because now he mm -hmm. knows his name. And I will say probably the favorite part for me was the next episode after that, where Mando turns around and he just says, and he was like, Grogu, huh? and he goes, ha, 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 ha. I love it. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. it just, you, you just <laughs> enjoyed it so much. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was just like, I, I can connect with the kid. I can connect. And then you really started seeing them connect even Bond. more, like that father and son uh, 
kind of connection, which I just thought was, mm -hmm. you know, really cool, which I'm sure Gary, as a dad, you understand. And oh gosh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Of course, Denzel, Denzel's not a dad, but he has one. So he understands. Yeah. yeah. He has a dog. <laughs> yeah. He has a dog now. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and hats off to uh, Rosario mm -hmm. Dawson playing, you know, I know she wasn't in it yeah. much, but she did a great job playing such a beloved character. I don't know much about the character as mm -hmm. I had to be reminded of her name again. But uh, I, I, you said this is Clone Wars, yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> she's such a beloved character; could not have been easy. But she she did a great job, you know. And um, she wanted it yeah. too. That's the thing. She's yes. like, I want to play this part, and mm -hmm. and so like you know, how sometimes actors or actresses would be like, I want to do this, and then they're terrible, you yeah. know. But like, no, like her heart she was in, she did it right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it was great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. You got to go, Denzel. If you can take me off the screen for a moment. All right. So poor Denzel. We've lost He'll Denzel. Right I apologize. So yeah. Uh, so what do we, we do are, with Denzel? Okay. Yeah. Well, we did. We did uh, with poor mm -hmm. Denzel. So everyone knows we are interrupting his work day. I mean, we're interrupting yeah. Gary's work day. I'm off, but you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the week of Christmas. I'm not doing much anyway. <laughs> That's so true. The yeah. boss left at eleven. So <laughs> yeah, but there you go. <laughs> So are we allowed to talk Star Wars without Denzel or do we just stare awkwardly into the camera until he returns? Oh no. We're, he's just going to have to catch up like a person who okay. didn't watch anything. So, okay. But yes, yeah, but just to continue on with what you're saying is she did a great job. She, she did. did a great job. And the, the really casting, the, and that's the other thing I want to say about the casting for this season, especially has just been top notch, mm -hmm. you know, um, who knew Bill Burr had such great acting chops. I know, right? Holy, I've seen him in a couple things. I know he's a hilarious comedian, but like, holy cow, that scene where he's staring at the, was it the general guy? And they're having that yeah. conversation. I was like, dude, it was like De Niro and Pacino in heat there for a little bit. Yeah. Like, holy, and he just shoots him. He's like, I don't know. Yeah, no, he didn't care <laughs> at that great. point. He and the other guy, just like, the other stormtrooper doesn't know what to do. He's just like, he just, <laughs> right. that was, that was really, that was a cool moment. So. Yes. Yes, it was. And. I will add one more thing that I thought was cool and poor Denzel. He's not here to hear it, but that's all right. Yeah. But the, mo the other thing I thought was cool is that, you know, in the first, especially, well, more so in this second season, Mando has really been challenged with his not taking off the helmet because this is the way, mm -hmm. right. Yes. And then not questioning anything or whatever. So seeing him like in this season, because a lot of times for me, when I have like a superhero, like a Spider-Man or something, who's constantly taking his mask off, like they have been, it annoys the mess out of me because I'm yeah. like, no, you're Spider-Man, Peter Parker, separate. Yep. Dang it. Not everyone needs to yep. know your identity or this doesn't work. Yep. But with Mando, it, it's to me, I've just been like, man, this is because at first I was kind of like, stop taking off your mask. And then I just realized mm -hmm. how his character is growing and yes. how, he, how he's starting to see like, maybe this is the way isn't the best way because, yeah. because this is the way could cost people, people's lives. Mm -hmm or could cause yeah. people to where they can't come back in, like come back and be able to um, like really help him or understand him. So I just yeah. thought that's been, been really, really cool. It goes into the whole, like uh, this is the way, however, the heart behind that sometimes may need to take a step, take a step further, you know, and remove it for the, the, the greater good. Mm -hmm. you know, I, yeah. And I'm with you right there. I like the poster behind me, Michael Keaton. I love the movie. I love him as Batman, but when he takes his mask off and Batman returns, it irritates me every time. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yes, don't do that. You know? Yeah. Uh, it's Wayne. Why are you just like Batman? Sorry. Right. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. But, maybe, <laughs> yeah. but it's true. Like, and you get frustrated with that, but maybe, mm -hmm. but maybe the difference here too is where Mando, we never saw his face to begin with. He's Mando. Yeah. So maybe Mando, it's like yeah. seeing the other ego. Yeah. It's like, okay, I don't know. Alter ego. Yeah. But it just yeah. seems like he's starting to grow and just starting to understand say, more about it. I will say I, I understand and I agree with the story, like him having to remove his mask a couple times, you know. Mm -hmm. But I will I don't want to jump too far ahead, but the end of the finale when he takes his mask off for in front of Grogu. Oh, I, yeah. I think it would have been more power. It was such a powerful scene, but imagine if we don't see his if that's the first time he takes his mask off. You yeah. know what I mean? That yeah. would have been. That would have been. You, you would have took it even further, you know. Yeah. But the with the story's sake, he, he kind of had to do it before, especially in right. the two episodes right. before, you know. Well, um, I wish they could have done it. Um, and and I, we see Denzel's back. We'll bring him back here in a second. There he is. But but uh, I wish they would have done it in a way where you remember how in the first season when he was in that quiet little village, 
and he mm-hmm. took his helmet off, but they just kind of panned away. Yeah. See, see yeah. I think they still could, they could have done that. Like even that that part with the when he needed to facial recognition, his face or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, in the Bill Burr episode. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. take the helmet off, but pull away. Off. Like, don't away, show yeah. his face. And I think Less you're right. Yeah. And I think you're right. Mm-hmm. If they would have saved his actual face for that moment when he says bye to Grogu, a hundred cool. times more powerful. Yeah. So, cool. and then, so here we go. We're going to bring Denzel back in here. Hey, welcome back. Hey, welcome back. Sir. Yeah. So, so yeah. So there we go. Uh, anything else you wanted to add, Denzel, as you thought of while you were out uh, working? In terms of favorite moments? Yeah. Um, I think that I really enjoy like how they brought, uh, or not sentiment, but I guess like purpose to some of the things that um, the Mandalorian had, not necessarily like, like the, the people that he was connected with, but some of the sentiment to like his ship, like when his ship was destroyed, like you saw his, his heart break, like even through the mask, you saw mm-hmm. his heart break. And I really liked how they brought sentiment to that, but they also still saved his pipe, which like survived the blast and he was able to find the blast. Mm-hmm. Even like the ball that he found in the blast for Grogu, like you can see yeah. the emotion like in his, in his demeanor and like how he's moving his mask just by like picking it up out of the ashes. It's like, well, I got to find that boy now, or I got to find that, that kid. Mm-hmm. I got to protect him. I like how they brought sentiment to objects and certain, mm-hmm. like, like certain things in the universe. Some of like the weapons that they use, like the dark saber, like that was a huge, uh, big thing, like plot twist there at the very end where yeah. it was Mando that like killed or not killed, but like captured Moff Gideon. You could see, like Bo Katan's heart sink when she saw that because she knew immediately. It's like, oh well, crap! Now he's the like leader of the yeah. Mandalorian world, or mm-hmm. he he now has like leads to the throne. And like the thing, the story, and the things behind some of those objects. Again, like the dark saber, where like Bo Katan now like she has to do something in order to. She can't just like take the sword from Mandal the Mandalorian. Like right. he, she has to like fight him for it or something like that. <laughs> Mando was like, just, just take it. I, I, don't, take it. I don't want it. Want it. I got the yeah. kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got I my yield. stick in my ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping Which that'll I'm, be, a, I'm pretty sure that'll be a huge uh, storyline in, in season three. Right yeah. That's going to, that's going to be very interesting. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure we'll talk about it here in just a minute, but yeah, like the bringing like sentiment to certain objects like that and like how those objects are going to be like the forefront of like the story going forward. Uh, I think they're all going to be big part parts of the story as a whole Mm -hmm. yeah 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 and i love seeing too like piggyback off that is how he's a man of his word because like with that dark saber scene he's like i yield just take it it's like yeah like i said you can have it i don't care like just seeing that he is a man of his word and i appreciate that just seeing Mm -hmm. that that that's how he is that you know because he's considered this horrible bounty hunter that we have always been told are bad people but then we're seeing Mm -hmm. this guy who has a heart who's protecting a kid and is a man of his word. And it's like, no, nah, like this guy may be a bounty hunter, but that's his way of life. That's not who he is. So yeah. I, I really like that too. He wants Grogu, you know? And yeah. it's like he told Moff Gideon, that I love that, you know, episode seven said, you know, you have no idea how much he means to me, you know? Yeah. So you have something I want. I was just like, oh, and then, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't BSing, you know, he would yeah. do anything for Grogu. Yeah. I will yeah. say when we're, while we're still talking, still talking about favorite moments as well, I will say like, I really enjoyed, the humor that they brought into it. Like we saw a little bit of it in season one, but at the very end, like we saw like the humor side of like the, the stormtroopers trying to shoot that can yeah. and they were smacking oh, Grogu yeah. in the head. Like we saw that, but then we also saw like that was the very first one of the first few things we saw in episode one of season mm-hmm. two. And then like the humorous the humor aspect was also like all throughout season two. It wasn't just like here and there. It was mm-hmm. it, it was tasteful was there just in the right amounts it wasn't like overly like comedic it wasn't like supposed to be a comedy or anything but it was it was humorous i really mm-hmm. enjoy some of those humorous moments yeah. very comedically humorous denzel <laughs> I like it. very very I much so i agree yeah. so hopping on here is uh now least favorite moments if you can find one mm-hmm. so let's see so for least favorite moments as we uh, try to think about this. I, I mean, I guess I guess my turn to go first. Um, it, like for me, honestly, and I think we kind of talked about this before. It's still my least favorite. Were just like I said, those two kind of filler episodes because of that reason. Because they felt like they were filler. Um, yeah. 
and 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 like and, which which is funny because it's like the everything that happened in that episode was cool it was just like without the all the other episodes you know how did that stand alone it was just kind of that filler episode every, you know and every show does that um but like i said i think i mean like i said earlier that, that's why i liked about the first season is it didn't feel that um but it felt just kind of filler and so for me, those are like I guess my list, even just two least favorite episodes. They were still good because they served the per- the greater story. Yeah. But when you can't binge watch, it's kind of hard to appreciate those episodes. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that my least favorite moments were probably in this. You you guys may disagree with these, but no, my okay. some of my least favorite moments were in uh, the last episode of the season. Okay. okay. Uh, Number one was the was the fight he had with Moff Gideon. Mm-hmm. I was expecting a, I was expecting that fight to be more than what it was. Like, uh-huh. don't get me wrong, I'm really excited that it happened, but I was almost ex- I was expecting Moff Gideon to fight like Ahsoka Tano, or I was expecting him to fight like the Jedi that came to save Grogu, who mm-hmm. was like, Skywalker. Like, I was expecting some sort of like grand, like much more of a fight than what he put up. Mm-hmm. Like it almost seemed like he he thought he was better than that. Moth thought he was better than what he was, and he was like, "Oh, well, okay, I'm, I guess I'm not that good." Mm-hmm. And he kind of well, just like, yeah. Well, maybe just for a little bit of clarification with how that whole third thing turned out, at least in my opinion, with him being like, "Oh, this is going to be interesting." It's almost like he threw the fight at the same time. Yeah, it could be. So I don't know, maybe, but but be, I see what you're saying though. Anyway. Yeah, like uh, like he threw so the like, fight. Uh, you Moff Gideon. Yeah, like yeah, he threw the, the Moff- fight to cause the rift between them two. Probably. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. We, that, that's a that's a that's a decent theory. Like I, I won't be surprised if he did that. At the same time, like I feel like he, if he was true, if Moff Gideon was as evil or as as powerful as he said he was, I feel like he would have put up much more of a fight than what um he was handed to him or what he gave to the Mandalore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then in that same episode, I would guess like one of the most epic moments, which is is when you know Luke Skywalker he comes onto the scene. He actually Wait, looks what? Cool. He actually, whatever you've seen this, the people who haven't seen these things, they need to watch these things anyways. That's right. Like Luke Skywalker, he comes into the episode. He shows him shows his might. They portray him as the most powerful Jedi at that time, which was like historically accurate. Like they show him actually like like not even like flinching or even breaking a sweat, destroying all those like death troopers. And like that was awesome. I love not that. even a jog, he's just strolling. Yeah. Right. Just strolling. So like I love that they brought in Luke Skywalker in that aspect, but I also kind of hate that they brought Luke Skywalker into it because if everything else still stays as canon, like with episode mm-hmm. seven, eight, nine. And we can somewhat guess the end that uh, that's the end of the story for Grogu. Mm-hmm. That we can safely, we can probably assume that Grogu was at the temple when Kylo Ren like destroyed the temple and like went went against Luke Skywalker and things like that. Unless we hear or see something in the future that's going to tell us different about Grogu, we can guess that Grogu's probably now dead because of Kylo Ren. Mm-hmm. So like I both hated but also loved like. Um, Luke Skywalker's entrance, but yeah. it was one of my least favorites just because of the history that's behind that and what we know leading up to that point and what we know is supposedly like supposed to happen now. Supposedly supposed to happen. Right. Yeah, I can understand that. I understand. How about you, Gary? A uh, frog lady. That's all. Frog lady. I didn't like the frog lady. That's she annoyed me. But she showed up, and I and I. I mean, I understood. I, I appreciated the story they're trying to tell. But I was like, oh man, I hope this whole season it, it, this frog lady trying to get to her dude. And I was, but th- <laughs> thankfully it wrapped up quickly. And I know it was done for comedically humorous purposes, but well, every time he ate one of those eggs, it really cra- it really grossed me out. <laughs> <laughs> it just really freaked me out. It grossed me out worse than the spiders did. I don't know why. But yeah. uh I mean, if 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 I say my least favorite moment, it'd be like everything that it's the frog lady. But thankfully she wasn't around much. Yeah. You know. So the whole second episode in general was just kind of yeah. pretty much. I mean, I pre- I mean, I didn't dislike the episode, but it's, it's frog, was, frog lady can frog lady can go be with her husband and in jar of eggs and and live live her life. Just stay away from my, my show now. 
Mm-hmm. So, so I want to know like frog lady's reaction to counting her eggs and realizing that there's ten missing. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> ten of my ten. Yes, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was the sound or just every time it just really <laughs> grossed me out every yeah. single time. I don't know. I can't explain it. I'm weird. I know, but it was just like, oh. It, it, I will say that's what cracks me up about that episode, though, is because like he goes in there and like touches the canister, and it's just like, oh man, he's gonna do something like force like. Is he gonna help him out? And then he's like, <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay. It took a really dark turn, really quickly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it like, really. This did. kid does not play games. <laughs> he's like, I'm hungry. He's uh, a savage. Yes, that is. That is. Uh-huh. So. um no need, you know. There's too much good guys in the Mandalorian, so no need to sit oh, here yeah. and focus yeah. on the negative. But uh, let's put all of our, all of us, on the spot. Um, if I learn how to speak, one episode. What is your favorite? One from this episode. season. From this season. From this season. Oh, yes. From this uh, season. And yes, Gary, you have the big square. You are up first. I am the big square. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I want to say episode one, but I got to say episode eight, just with everything that went down and how it went about. Mm-hmm. Um, episode eight, maybe just a notch above episode one. So we can say episode eight. Okay. Okay. So episode Plus, eight. I know that'll make Denzel mad. So. <laughs> All right, Denzel. Mine's going to be episode six with the entrance of Boba Fett and the Death Troopers, and we see them all like fight each other and like the epic entrance that Boba Fett and. Uh, his, his sidekick made and the death troopers coming in like they they're showing like how epic they are and how powerful they are supposedly and uh like showing that of course we were all thinking that boba fett and the mandalorian were going to have like some sort of fight where sokotano was going to be fighting them but I, i'm re- i was really happy to see that mandal that both i was like no like the deal was like you give me my armor and we'll protect your we'll, we'll make sure that the kid is safe like mm-hmm. we are in your debt and like announcing that they were going to be working together. That made that episode so sick. It was mm-hmm. that yeah. episode, so episode six is my favorite. Yeah. And uh, and sorry, Gary, I'm going to have to agree with Denzel on this because I know you don't like agreeing with Denzel. But listen, man, that episode with Boba Fett coming in. It was him, pretty great. Yeah, them kind of fighting and arguing at first and then him trying to go back and forth to protect Grogu and then then uh, even just like to me, like I just love the money shot when it was Mando, Boba Fett, and you know I forget her name, the sharpshooter. You know, like it was the three of them, and he had that. Oh, no. Sh- sh- no, not her. <laughs> Chill. Oh. But you know, they had that kind of shot. Like here they are, and this. I'm just like, oh, this episode is so good. And good. I just that one was the one that to me was my favorite, um, and it was my favorite. And I think episode eight was my favorite until Luke showed up, which I'll explain in a little bit. I don't have a problem with Luke showing up, but I have thoughts. And okay. so, but that was, but just picking episodes, I'm with Denzel. That's the one I picked. This show is so good. There's really not, except for episode two with frog lady, I guess, but there's <laughs> like, except for that episode, any episode from this season, someone says my favorite, I'd be like, all right. Yeah. Cause it's well, just because, so solid. All the way through. Yeah, well, cause if you pick one, if you say I like this instead of this and here's why you really nitpicking. If you think about mm-hmm. it. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, you have to really comb through the episodes to find something negative about it that you don't like. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So that's why it's kind of like, okay, all right, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. no, and no thing on there. But any more final thoughts, gentlemen? Just anything at all? Um, I guess as you as you think on final thoughts, I guess I'll go ahead and explain myself since I said the whole Luke thing. Um, <laughs> so, so here's my thing: is when the question was, who's going to, who's it going to be? Who's going to be the Jedi to show up? You know, I, I was thinking, come on, it's got to be Ahsoka. Because I think it'd be, it would have been cool to have her come back, have a change of heart, not only help save them, see her be awesome some more, but then just mm-hmm. be like, hey, here's a change of heart. I will take the kid. You know, I found another Jedi. And maybe introduce, like, I just wanted something like that. But then um, a friend of mine had reminded me, oh, but who's the most powerful Jedi right now who would actually hear him? And I was like, oh, it's going to be Luke. Luke's going to show up. And then I was like, and he's like, yeah, that's probably going to be. I was like, dang it. And he's like, you don't want that to happen? I was like, no, because I personally like having having this storyline being pretty separated from the Skywalker saga. You know, like I like it being 
it, it's kind of its own thing. Yeah, we have these remnants, but I like Skywalker's not being around. And um, and so That's when his X wing, so when his X wing showed up, and they were like, "Oh wow, just one X wing," and I was like, "Yeah, but that one X wing is carrying something very awesome." So, um, so but where I but where I did like it was, like we said earlier, he showed up. He just took a stroll through the through the you know the, the ship, and took every took all the dark troopers out that everyone had their handfuls with, um, and we got to see the awesome Luke Skywalker Skywalker that we all wanted to see in the you know in the Disney sequels, mm-hmm. and I think that's what even though I didn't care for it, I also liked it and appreciated it because mm-hmm. I felt like we got the we got the whiny Skywalker, you know where. People are just like, really? We've already been through this. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, but then now it's like, I'm the Jedi. I'm the man. Give me the kid. And it was just like, yeah. okay, cool. At least they made him awesome again. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, in terms of like final thoughts for, especially the final episode with uh, Luke Skywalker coming on scene, I feel like they had so much potential into like other characters that they had, especially ones that had been introduced previously, like uh, you guys won't know the name Ezra Bridger, but Ezra Bridger was a part of like the rebels. Ebenezer. Ha ha. You need to, you, like, once you watch like the Clone Wars and rebels, you'll, you'll know who like Ezra Bridger is. Mm-hmm. And, like I honestly thought it was going to be Ezra is going to be that character coming in to save um, Grogu and then maybe taking him to Luke Skywalker or whoever. Mm-hmm. Um, I even heard rumors at one point that some people say it's like, oh, what if it was Mace Windu coming back and he uh, just like somehow survived from the from his fall with uh, with Darth Sidious. Mm-hmm. Like so he never just, really like, saw his dead body. Mm-hmm. That's true. They never had a dead body. But I mean that that would just be another like I can see them not bringing Mace Windu because that'd be another like senseless death revival that they would have to somehow explain. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many issues with with episode three that I have with those Jedi's that were killed by Darth Sidious. Like all, of them just like fell over dead, and was so like unfortunate end to their story. Because like they put up no fight whatsoever. But Mace Windu, he's thrown out the window. You saw him. You didn't necessarily see him die. You just saw him. Um, mm-hmm. Saw him like be thrown away. So I thought it would have been really epic if like Mace Windu was the one to come back and save Grogu. But at the same time. Um, I was really surprised that it wasn't like Ezra Bridger or Sokotano, people that we already know about, some people that we know that are still alive. But I was not surprised that it was Luke Skywalker. Either. Yeah. It does make sense in the grand scheme of the story mm-hmm. for yeah. it to be Luke. I mean, at least it makes sense, which I do yeah. I do like that. Yes. Okay, fellas, I'm going to try not to fanboy out too much, but I loved it. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, so, and I think the reason I did love it so much, some of the reasons why is because I was the exact opposite. I didn't, Luke Skywalker showing up wasn't even on my radar. I think one, cause I keep forgetting the timeline we're in, you know, um, when the, when the X-Wing showed up, I was like, I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was one of those dudes from episode two. Like, what are they doing out here? <laughs> I was like, and I was like, well then, you know, then I thought about, a, 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 a Sokka, Asuka. Ahsoka. Um, Ahsoka, sorry. I'll learn. I promise. Talking about I was like, oh, it's her. That's okay. It's her. She got an X-Wing. That's cool. And I didn't even, I'm just watching. Oh, this is really cool. It's really cool. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute. And then I had this moment and I was just like, oh my gosh, that's right. He, he, he can, he can be here. And, uh, yeah. and I just had, it was just such a great moment for me as a, you know, as someone who just knows the movies mm-hmm. and lo- I just loved everything about it. And we have, and Efren, you spoke to this. We haven't really gotten that Luke Skywalker moment yet. We got a Return of the Jedi. As much as I love Last Jedi, we didn't really get it um, or at all. Is that tough? Maybe the very end. But that was his Rogue One moment, like Darth mm-hmm. Vader got. That was him just being Luke Skywalker, not even breaking a sweat. And I see this as them saying, "Okay, we're going to give you that Luke Skywalker moment and just get it out of the way." Here it is. Luke's going to train Grogu. He's the most powerful Jedi. He's going to go with him, and then we're going to move forward. And then we're going to bring in all these other beloved characters in. Um, if and, and if they stick to that, where we just know Luke's out there, we get a little sprinkle of Luke and all that nostalgia stuff every now and then, like they've been doing, I'll be fine with it. Mm-hmm. Where I'll have an issue with it is if it just becomes another Skywalker saga, which I, I don't think they're going to do. That That is where I'll have an issue. Um, speaking on the Kylo side of things, 
when you guys sent that text in the, the group we were in the other day, I was like, I mean, it was just like, and I, and I appreciated it. You reminded me, but it was kind of like, Oh my gosh, what a kind of a buzzkill, <laughs> you know, but I would love, I, I'm curious to see what with the story they tell going forward. Right. Um, you know, are they going to speak to that? Um, somebody, I, re- I watched a video yes last night where somebody said, this is Disney's way of just blaming JJ uh, Abrams and Brian Johnson for, they're just blaming them for killing Grogu, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, they have so many directions they can go. This is, it did what it was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Got us excited for what's going forward. And with Grogu going with Luke, Mando can now go do some different things. We got the dark saber story. We got all this other stuff going on. Um, it's going to be interesting. And um, I had this thought. What if I'm sorry, guys, Ahso- Ahso- Ahsoka, Soku. I, I'm Ahsoka. probably not doing the what? Ahsoka. 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 If she finds out the son of Anakin Skywalker is training Grogu, uh, that might be an interesting thing for her series to go explore. Like, okay, what you know what I'm saying? What's going on? Anakin's son's out there. Let's go figure this out. That could be a cool storyline. So, assuming she knows love- that's Anakin's son. Yeah, they, haven't assume, even, yeah. they haven't even like. Cause remember, yeah. what she said, remember what she said in that in her episode? Mm-hmm. She was like, "I don't know who else is out there, but maybe if someone's still yeah. alive, if they, she has that revelation of who it is, it could be like, oh, he's yeah. got it. Oh, okay.' But uh, yeah, it just um, this show has done a great job. Like I said earlier, this show I think is for every level of Star Wars fans. Someone who just knows the movie loves it. It's caused me to love it because of that stuff, the new stuff, the nostalgia mm-hmm. sprinkle in, and it is co- you'll appreciate this, Denzel. It has caused me to go and want to watch this other stuff I haven't seen before, like Rebels, mm-hmm. like Clone, Clone Wars. I'm not reading mm-hmm. the books, but you know what I mean. Like <laughs> it's just uh, it, so I, I, it's done its job. It's got me interested in what's next, and it wants me to look back. Sorry, I've talked enough. I'm just really excited. Yeah, but uh, did well, I mention that I love the Luke part? <laughs> so. Yes, yes, you did. But speaking on that, let's just go ahead and start yeah. looking into the future of what we think. Maybe some theories or what we think is going to happen and. Or what you did, we just hope that happens. Um, anything like that. So, uh, Denzel, what what do you think? Since you're obviously the more versed in lore, yep. what 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 are some stuff you saw, and what do you what do you think is going to go moving forward, and what do you hope happens? Well, in terms of like the Mandalorian, like his story, I think he's going to be going into uh, figuring out how to get the dark saber off of his hand and trying to get that to Bo-Katan now, or he's going to accept the role as the new ruler of like the Mandalorian throne. So I think his story is definitely going to go back to Mandalore and figuring out his, his uh, history and figuring out things that go along with that. Um, I think that's definitely where season three is headed of the Mandalorian. And I think he's going to be interacting with a lot of characters that we've seen in the past and a lot of characters that were introduced in this, in this series, especially Bo-Katan. Um, he'll probably interact with Boba Fett some more, and he'll definitely interact with Ahsoka Tano. But then, like the rest of the like Star Wars universe, you know, we have Boba Fett's new show coming out, the Book of Boba Fett. It'd be interesting to see where that goes. If that's going to be like a flashback in terms of how he got out of the Sarlacc pit, it would be interesting to even see if that goes into what he's doing now as the ruler of Jabba, <laughs> Jabba's, you know, yeah. crime syndicate. And then, like Ahsoka Tano's story is going to be told maybe you'll be telling us like what happened between uh the time of her being in star wars rebels and now or if it's just going to proceed from where we see of her now into finding like admiral thon you know of the grant of the grand uh, empire so it'd be interesting to see like where her story goes and then like we have so many other like star wars like stories and shows are coming out we have you know obi-wan kenobi story coming out we have uh the the rogue squadron uh you yeah. know yeah. have uh there's so many other stories bad, that are going to be coming out they're, they're just going to be adding in that bad batch man mm-hmm. i can't wait for bad batch mm-hmm. i'm so excited for bad batch mm-hmm. you have to watch season you have to watch through clone wars before you watch bad batch both of you have i to will it will happen um, Yes. So, like, you have all these other stories of characters that we know and love that are coming, and it's very exciting to see and know that they can all be connected and intertwined with one another. Mm-hmm. It's not like some, uh, like some of the Marvel 
uh, series that they did, like Daredevil and Luke Cage. Like they had a series of show episodes where they were all together and working together on it, but they also like none of them were in each other's shows at all. Whereas this, just about all these characters could maybe possibly be in each other's shows, like for an episode or two, and be working together. Mm-hmm. And like it all interconnects and all tells like one long story. The video games, the, the series, the episodes, the movie episodes, the Mandalorian episodes, like all these like can interconnect with one another. And it's that makes me very excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Gary? What, what do you got some thoughts there, man? Yeah, I'm right there with him. Uh, Darksaber storyline, finding some more Mandalore, going uh, with Bo Katone and Sasha Banks, and uh, continuing that journey, allowing you know more stories, more characters. Yeah, just taking it forward. And uh, if it continues to tell new stories with sprinkling in the nostalgia stuff, I'm fine with it. Keep keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. And bring yeah. back Bill Burr every now and then. I like this character. Yeah, yeah, they definitely set him up to where like we'll use him as yeah. needed. So I'm yeah. still wandering in the woods, but I'm free. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I for me, I'm excited where it's going. Uh, like what you guys mentioned, like the dark saber stuff. I mean, one thing I saw that I thought was really cool was seeing how Mando in season one, you know, he has all his bounty hunter weapons, and then by the end of mm-hmm. season two, he doesn't have his bounty hunter weapons. He has his Mandalore weapons with the saber and the spear, which I forget the name of it. My apologies, but those are the two things he have. He has and his armor. Like that's mm-hmm. what he has now. And it's just like just seeing that progression of all right, he's just his bounty hunter trying to do his thing. This kid changes his life. He's learning more about Mandalore through these other people that he's interacting with, you know, like Boba and you know, the other person, which I forget her name all the time, Boca something. Um and uh yeah, I know. Denzel's just like these morons. Why do I keep <laughs> talking with him? But uh um, that's why you're here, Denzel. That's right. That's why you're here. So but just seeing all that, and then these are the weapons he ends up with. Like, I just feel like they really are setting up the him trying to find. Because I mean, in season two, I need to find more people, more Mandalorians, anyways. Mm-hmm. And then now he's gonna try to find them. Now he's gonna try to, you know, restore Mandalore back to what he knows what Mandalore was supposed to be. And I think that could be really cool because now he has a an enemy that kind of, you know, is also one of his kind, but didn't really care for him too much anyways and now she's not going to care for him even more and so you know so there's that whole ordeal they can easily go into um that was a little bit of a civil war in the mandalore yep i know that's exactly what i was thinking that could happen have a little civil war and um and we're just kind of seeing and then of course uh like how can i just don't see how like gideon is still just going to be gone like i feel like he's going to want some kind of revenge or something somehow you know, assuming he's not just brought in a rebel prison. Um, yeah. But, you know, we'll see. But, I mean, there's just so much more. There's so much of the Empire still out there. There's so much more to explore. Um, Maybe we'll find out Marth Guinean was Palpatine all along. Now, there would be a twist. <laughs> That'd be terrible, but there would be a twist. <laughs> we got tanks of, of Gideons. Just... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to call back to that awful stuff. <laughs> no, 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 it's I mean, all right. I mean, he was talking about like getting the blood from Gogu as the, hey, the clone scientist. So it could be like leading into Darth Sidious' clone. Who knows? Season four, Grogu. He's a Palpatine the whole time. <laughs> yes. Oh no. So, Everyone's a right. Palpatine. Oh yeah, my I God. definitely agree. Like you the stories that we're Everyone, up to, everyone gets Palpatine. <laughs> so exciting. Oh. So you know one thing I do hope though. Because you know how we talked earlier about the realization of, oh, this means Grogu dies. Yeah. The, what I'm hoping is that they somehow explain how Grogu wasn't there, which yes. would make it even cooler because that means Grogu is still alive even through, mm-hmm. even through like the Disney sequels. And maybe yep. he, maybe you can even tell stories of him older or something. I don't yep. know. Or you can just yeah. tell stories after the Disney sequels, and maybe Grogu's the one on the forefront leading the Jedi or something. I don't know. I just think something like that would be cool. Just so we, just so he's not all this effort, all this effort yes. in two seasons just to die to mm-hmm. Kylo. Come on. Like, well, here's the I thing: they need, the need to do a re-edit of Episode Nine, where at the very end, when they're all talking to Ray, you just hear a baby Grogu coo. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, We're so speaking. okay, Grogu is everywhere. Okay, yeah. even people who don't even watch Star Wars love love this kid. 
Yeah. They know he's a cash cow. I guarantee you right now, Disney has a room full of people trying to figure out a way to get him out of that, out of that training center to continue yeah. his story. Because yeah, if they, no they, yeah, they, 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 they're, they're going to fix that. I guarantee you. Yeah, they don't want to see that guy dead. I know. Yeah. I mean, they had to. Right? This, this is what they knew they were going to do this. They had mm -hmm. to have known, oh, here's a little storyline that's going to happen unless we fix it. We need to yeah. fix it. You know, like it needs yeah. to happen. You know, imagine an end credit scene like season five of Mandalorian where you show, they show the him escaping <laughs> yes. when, when Kylo did what he did. That'd be so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, either him escaping or maybe, um, you know, maybe somehow Luke finds out about other Jedi that are out there and he yeah. sends them off, whether it be in Ahsoka or Ezra or somebody, mm -hmm. and he sends them mm -hmm. off, you know, and then yeah. they go train with them because, you know, now I, ha I have too much responsibility. Maybe he was, he was shipped My off or something. My yeah, he's crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like there's got to be something. Surely yeah. Kylo doesn't just wipe him out in his sleep. Yeah. Grogu's too awesome for that ending. No, that, we can't allow that. No, we cannot. I've said this once and I'll say it again. Like you guys, before all these new series has come out, you have to watch the Clone Wars. The Clone Wars. You have yeah. to watch the Rebels in order to know yeah. the stories behind Mando, the Mando, the Mando lore, if you will. Mando lore. You, you the lore behind Mandalorian. <laughs> but you I, have to watch Clone Wars and you have to watch Rebels. Yeah. At some point I this mean, week, I give you my word, I will start the Clone Wars. Yeah. I mean, it, but you're right, you're right, Denzel, because here's the thing. There was that great joke. There was that great joke in the last episode, or that the last episode. It was like, I'm Boba Fett. I'm a Mandalorian. You're not a real Mandalorian. It's like, my father was. He, don't you mean oh, you're yes. a donor? It's just like, yeah. you don't know the you story. Say? You don't get that. I've heard right. that voice a hundred times, over and over, yep. or something like that. Yeah. Yep. yeah exactly. Him and Sasha Banks had an awesome, in, him and Sasha Banks had an awesome fight. Too. And I'm like, Boba Fett versus Sasha Banks, WrestleMania 38, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> so back to you see, you see the whole backstory of like Bo Katan and like her Mandalorian story and how like yeah. she get, like, it explains how she gets the dark saber in Rebels. Like, yeah. So it explains like all of that in Rebels and in Clone Wars and like you guys are missing out so much by not seeing. Not not for long. Not for long, Denzel. Yeah, not, not for long. I'll, I'll watch it. <laughs> I'll hold you to it. <laughs> I'll you down. I have a daughter all that the I viewers who are watching now. You all need to watch it as well. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Listen, I did this on purpose. I told my daughter, hey, we need to watch these Star Wars things because they're important for Mandalorian. And I can't let you watch Mandalorian until we watch this because I don't want you to be confused like your poppy. And so I did that on purpose because I knew that my daughter would be like, would not leave me alone about watching it. So there's no way I could forget. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So there you go. So there you go, everyone. Wrapping up our Mando Monday. Thank you, as always, Mando Denzel. Monday. For, you, for joining us and giving us more smarts, Star Wars smarts thank that we desperately thank need. Thank you. Thank you for helping me out with Glad names to today. I'll work on it. Yes. Uh, Bo-Katano, bo Boba, bo Fett. Katano, bo boba Fett. Fett. You should at least know Boba yeah. Fett. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. Yes. Boba Fett. I know him. Yes. So, yeah. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe, share, turn on the bell. And then... Yes, go I, ahead. I have one question for you guys before you go. Uh, do you think the R2-D2, when he showed up oh, yeah. at the very end of the last one, do you think he had some uh, some memory of Grogu in the Jedi Temple? That's why he was so excited? Sure. Oh, maybe, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I don't see why not. I didn't think of that. I didn't think of each other. There was like an instant connection there, and he got us super excited. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah R2 was excited. It's yeah. True. Maybe so. I didn't think food about that. Thought. Yes, food okay. for thought indeed. So, and one last thing, our boy Denzel has his own channel. Yeah. Denzel Lofgren, and then he also has a gaming channel, in it's case true. you guys haven't heard. Liz Ned, Denzel Backwards. Liz Ned Gaming. Go check that out. Subscribe. Oh. Play different games on there. And uh, you can either Your do what I do. Advice. Make fun. So, what's that? <laughs> Viewer discretion is advised because of the video games I play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, uh, or you can do what I do sometimes. You can go out there and be like, "Oh, you're terrible at this." Like when he was trying to play Fall Guys, and he was absolutely horrid. But you know, whatever. I just had to make fun of him. So that's all. Fair enough. So don't forget to follow him. Subscribe over there as well. Subscribe to us, 
and don't miss out. So don't miss out on anything new. Yep. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Merry Christmas. See you next Merry year. Christmas. See you next year.